What's going on everyone? My name is Will from Ghost Hack and today I'm going to show you how to make a basic track using the construction kits included in the Ghost Hack Pack Future Pop Nation 2. Now there are some people out there that don't really like using construction kits, they might not have seen much use for it, you know, just separating the stems out from a song that is already made, but it can be very useful first of all to learn, and secondly you get a lot of really cool sounds, especially, you know, from this kit where the pack is not copyrighted, like you can use these sounds in your own music, but even still a lot of people don't find them useful, I just want to show you how you can use them to make a track that is different from the original demo track, you can put your own spin on this. And that's really what I'm going to do today. I decided to use uh, Construction Kit 5 right here, which is Heartbeat, and they have all the different stems as well as the full track. They have the MIDI and some of the dry stuff as well. I'm not actually going to play the track on here because our goal is to make something that is different from the original track, and if I try to play the original track, I know it is going to get just in my head and that's all I'm gonna hear. That's the only ideas I'm going to have. So I'd rather just, you know, just start out just using these samples. I'm sure you understand. We're just making a track here. So uh, the things I know for a fact are that this is 105 BPM and that it is in G sharp. So we got a uh, bass. There's the guitar. We got brass. As well as dry brass. There we go, that's probably gonna be a little better. Then we got claps. Cymbals. We got a fill here. That's pretty cool. Uh, effects. Uh, there's guitars. And there's like a reverse guitar sound. Kicks. Rides, We've got snaps, and here's the vocals that are wet. There's a little bit of delay here, so the best thing to do is just play them like this. Too many, too many times we had a way to apologize. Right. And there is also dry vocals under this tab as well, so I'm probably going to use the dry ones so I can affect them the way I want. And there is uh, some vocal, kind of a vocal reverse sample here. Cool. And then there's the full track, which we aren't going to use. And just to make sure I display all the aspects of this pack, here are the midis. This one is the bass. That's going to become very useful because that'll tell us the general chord progression of a lot of these uh, loops. And then here's the brass. Cool. So this is at 105 BPM, so the tempo is going to be about this. So it's definitely going to be something four to the floor. And I think what I want to do is I want to make some sort of, you know, chill, maybe tropical housey. Um, rhythm and I then I want to use the vocals to create kind of a vocal chop melody in the main part of it. So this guitar will definitely be a part of it, but I think I want it to be more background. We're just going to make the main hook right now and then we can structure everything else around that. That's generally how I go about making tracks. So let's take this guitar here and the first thing I want to do is add some effects on it. Yeah, that becomes a little easier to listen to at that point. And of course, tad bit of reverb. The next part I know that I'm gonna need, I am going to need the kick drum. That's definitely a big part. Fortunately, it's already in the rhythm that I want it to be. It needs to be mixed though. Oh, and make sure the time is turned down. And now we're gonna throw that into one. Um, I am going to need snaps. So the snaps are definitely going to come in handy. And then we have the claps all done. This is one of those things with the construction kits that I find to be pretty nice is that when you have the drums, usually they're pretty straightforward and pretty dry, which means you can throw them right in. There isn't a lot of editing that has to be done. They're just simple drums and they're really easy to throw in. Gonna throw a tad bit of reverb on this clap. Just fill out a little space. 
All right, there it is, that's basically done. I know I will also need this little crash symbol, it's not very loud. And then we can also take this little effects, that white noise effects, because we know we will be needing it later anyways. We should also duplicate all of this, so we have a full uh, eight bars here. I actually do not like this bass loop. In there with the drop, I may add it in other places, but I, I, I so I don't think I'm going to use that. I think I'm just going to use this bass guitar. It appears to be a little smoother, and now we can do things to it that we want, such as maybe add a little low end. So it's a little more synthetic almost. What I'm also going to do here, the low end is a little inconsistent, so I'm just going to compress it. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this and duplicate this over to this side right here. And uh, this is essentially the same thing over again. I just wanna make sure that I don't uh, leave out the first part of these snaps right here. So I wanna keep those in. And at this point, I wanna add these rides. Just to get a little more stuff going on, even what we could do is maybe offset it. I'm kind of a fan of that. In this case though, I think these uh, files right here should be extended all the way to the end. And I think we need to make some changes here, mainly by making a cut right here on this reverse. And then just sliding this reverse over right there so it only happens at the very end. We don't need this cutting out the way that it did last time. So now what we're gonna do is make a quick uh, vocal chop loop that I wanna use in this little area. So I'm going to uh, take a listen to these and I'm going to find a spot that I think would be good, just a little bit, to be good to throw into a vocal chopper so I can make a loop. All right, this is the audio sample I came up with that has a little bit of lows and a little bit of highs. We had a way to apologize. It's all the heart. It's distorting a little bit in the high range, but I actually kind of like that distorted style. I think it's going to really, you know, affect the affect the vocal chops pretty well. And I'm probably going to add distortion myself. Adding a little bit of distortion and saturation usually is a very good idea for vocals of this sort. So now what we do is we replace this with a fruity slicer. So here's the fruity slicer, and we're going to drop this right in here. Now there are a couple things we need to do. First, we need to disable declick. We need to turn down to the the decay of things. And then we need to hit play to the end. So now we have things kind of separated out into chops. And now we need to adjust these knobs so we have pretty much as many chops as possible. This is the way that I sort of like it. So this adds more chops. And this definitely adds more chops, so we're gonna go all the way here. So now we have a lot of like different slices to work with here, almost too much. Now my idea for this vocal chop is that I find one vocal slice that can kind of play some sort of melody that I want, then I'll add other slices here and there for variation. I kinda want 42 right here. I feel like I can kind of play a melody with that. I think what I'm also going to do is take a piano and I'm going to take the bass line melody and throw it in there. Just to make sure I'm using the right notes for the vocal chops. And here's the thing when we're doing this, we can always mess with the pitch of specific notes by coming up here and hitting note fine pitch. Like I want this one to hit uh, just right on the root note. That's kind of a cool way to start it out. It's kind of a, just a beginning uh, step at making a good vocal chop loop. Yeah, I think that'll work out pretty well after it's affected. And I'm just going to repeat this pattern here. But I'm gonna change it up. So there we go, now it sounds like. It's 
So I actually decided to do a little bit different thing at the end here. Uh, I kind of switched it up away from the melody. I decided just to do more of a phrasing instead. <laughs> And what I'm going to do with this melody is I think I'm going to scoot it aside a little bit. Yeah, so just it's a little more on time and then maybe trim the edges. Yeah, I think that's good as far as just giving it a little more just like a little more choppiness, not so perfectly smooth. Yeah, I think what I want to happen is I want to have this uh, this playing on the first half and then it's going to go through this little transition and then it'll go into something else there. Maybe I'll do something fancy with the guitars or I'll add a lead, you know, using one of the sounds or something like that. But this is the, these are, you know, the, the chops that we have and I, I kind of like them, but they definitely need processing because they're pretty weak right now. I'm going to route these guys into 12 and now we can do some work here. <laughs> So first a little EQ like so. Next up we want to make sure they are all pretty much the same loudness. So the OTT is a pretty good way of just smashing things down. I think I'm also going to use this soft clipper. I kind of like how that sounds as far as it being that loud and distorted. I sort of like it, so I want to bring it down a little bit because it's very loud. A little bit of EQing there, and it needs some compression and limiting. So I'm just going to put a Maximus on here. Along with that, I'd like to put the Dimension Expander. Both the OTT and the Dimension Expander are free plugins from Expert. Just adds a little bit of stereo width there. And then at the very end, I'm going to put a little bit of reverb. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I rather like having this fill here. I think it's pretty cool, but it doesn't really fit with the song at this point. It doesn't fit with the mixing. So I'm going to just trim those little hi-hats at the beginning first off, duplicate it here. Then I'm gonna uh, give it its own track. So I'm just gonna route this into 13 and then kind of do some edits. Tone down the top end. A little bit around here. Let me bring a little bit of high highs back. I actually kind of want to distort this myself. I think this would sound pretty cool. Maybe at half sign. Then we could really limit the high end a little bit more. I think that fits in a little bit better. At this point, I think it does make sense to add in this brass. Since it is just sitting there, you know, not getting used up and it's a pretty nice sound, but adding that in the background. Oh, it's not on time. I do not like that. We got to fix that up. But I just realized I grabbed the wet one. I definitely want to grab the dry one. This is going to be easier to deal with and it seems to be a little more on time, so we can go with that. I think I also want to use the Dimension Expander on this one. Spread it out a little bit. Definitely an EQ. Rolling off the super high end, and then a reverb. There we go. It's gonna be very low end brass. Also, we could add delay on it. That would also be pretty cool. Here's Fruity Delay 3. 
All right, what I think I want to do here when the second part comes is I want to add the bass loop. I think it kind of makes sense, but I want to do something different. I want to put it on one of these. I just chose slice map. I'm going to pitch it up an octave. Not perfect, but I think it still sound pretty good. Then what I want to do on this last bit is I want to chop it right there. And then I'm going to make this unique. And then I'm going to bring it back down an octave. So it kind of slides down full circle instead of going back up like it did before. Now there is no side chaining going on in this track. This is definitely the next thing that needs to happen. I'm going to call 20 our sidechain track. So five will route into 30. Our sidechain track will route to that track only. This is the uh, kind of sound effects down. Just really quiet white noise. We have this, which is also going into 30. There is this right here, which definitely has to go into 30. There is this guy. The bass, which 100% needs to go into 30. Then we have the vocal chops. Until further notice, I think I'm actually going to uh, leave those not side chain because they're pretty strong and the kick is not super loud, so it doesn't need to be everything. Then we have this brass, which also definitely needs to be side chain. We can wrap that. And then finally, we have this guy. which 100% needs to be sidechain. So we have a lot of things going into the sidechain channel right here. So now what I like to do, you can use like any plugin that really has a volume knob. I like to just take the limiter, set the ceiling to like nothing, and then I can create an automation clip for the gain, and this will be my sidechain trigger. All right, so this is what we have going here. It's too much, it has to be much less strong, so we can try a couple different shapes, double curve. No, it's not, it doesn't, it isn't quite, it's still too strong. We need to take it back a little bit. Actually, when it comes to the vocal, I think I do want to side chain it a little bit, but just the slightest bit. And I know it's definitely going to be on 4-4, so I'm going to actually use the gross beat for this one. And obviously this is too drastic, I just want it very gentle. I want it to be a very quick and fast, a quick and fast side chain. Okay, now the beauty of these packs is that everything is sort of rendered out and everything is sampled out, all the different tracks, so we can affect them individually. And I think putting just putting the guitar here might not actually be the most original thing to do. I think I want to chop it up a little bit and add some like different effects. I think what I'm actually do, gonna do is continue to use the gross beat and find different uh, effects here that sound good with the guitar and make it kind of a more interesting loop. And I'm gonna kind of blend between those four effects by creating automation clips. This first one I found is this one. I thought it kind of kept the chord progression pretty good with making some interesting chops. Now we can load in yet another gross beat and find a different one. This one right here is also a pretty good one. That low note right there also sounds pretty good. So now we can find yet another one. This one is nice and glitchy.
once again carries the chord progression pretty well and we'll find one more all right i, I kind of like this one Only in certain situations can it be used though, so we're gonna make sure to find the right positions for that one. So now that we highlight that area, I can go ahead and create automation clips for all of these right here, and we can kind of go in between them all. All right, so I've decided to do it this way, the first one, the third one, the second one, and then the fourth one. You can see that I have these on like full, and then it goes down to zero, and it sounds like this. and it actually tend, like seems to work out pretty well. Now from here, once you have your main hook, you could continue making the song, you know, however you please, just taking these elements and kind of throwing them in the intro. Obviously you have an acapella, so you have plenty to work with there, but I'm gonna go ahead and listen to the one that they have right here, because I just wanna see, it's probably going to sound fairly similar, but I just wanna show you how I like made changes and made things a little bit different. It is also a lot louder because uh, their track has been mastered and mine has been has not been. But we'll just kind of give this what looks like the main hook a listen. They had a little hi-hat pattern in here. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, here it is. I didn't end up using that. Mine turned out a, a little bit differently here. I ended up just offsetting the rides right here instead of adding this little hi-hat, that little hi-hat shaker thing. But overall, it sounds pretty similar except they did not chop up the vocals the way I did. And obviously they used some more samples as well, like in the intro. It's not enough to fight, but it's not enough for love. I kind of actually prefer, really, the glitches that I add to the guitar. The guitar sounds good, but with the glitches, it sounds that much more interesting and a little more adds a little more complexity to the drop, especially with the vocals. And in this sense, by moving the bass up one octave, we essentially kind of made it more of like a lead instead of an actual bass line, because we have the bass right here that we affected, but it's working better as the bass and the other one as the lead. So there we go, that is how I would go about kind of making a song using the construction kits instead of just reconstructing the song that is already there. Again, a lot of this turned out very similar to the original construction kit, but I believe the best parts about this kit are, first of all, it's royalty free, so if you would like to use this guitar loop, or something else in your production, you 100% can, there will be no issues with that. And also it is very handy to have the elements of the track kind of laid out to just kind of give you a little bit of experience as far as like track arrangement and all the different layers, because a lot of people might only hear a few specific things. Like they might hear that, uh, that kind of thumping bass line as the lead and the guitar and maybe some of the drums. Maybe there's not the nuances that they hear in the background that you don't really know about until you look at the kit and you say, wow, this has a lot more different parts and different layers than I thought there was. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this and I will see you in the next video. Happy producing.